This is for suckers the way they're playing. Well, as he speaks. Dead right, too. Suckers. I don't know, I just, I can't believe I lost that match. I was in control. Behind Earl Strickland's famous bad temper. I'm making these awesome shots. Oh, you kidding oh, me. No. Oh, you're one lucky guy. It seems everyone backstage at the World Pool Championship has a personal story to tell about the great Earl Strickland and his bizarre rants and raves. Earl's always looking for a sympathetic ear in order to unload a litany of complaints about the world in general. If you're a player, a guest, or working the event, it's only a matter of time before you'll stumble upon Earl and receive an earful about his sorry life, how he can't win this tournament, he's past his prime. The table conditions suck, the Taiwanese are hogging the practice tables, etc. Sometimes it's Earl who corners people into listening. Humans are easily entertained, and the sights and sounds of a grown man in the stages of psychological meltdown seem to be especially appealing. Who is the guy? See, these are the kind of things that make me upset. I played a skins game in, Los, in Atlantic City. Now, this is a good example. I got this shot in the skins game, right? There's four balls on the table for $20,000, right? Oh, no, you can't call that thing. You can't just give it a fan. Well, why in the hell did they send it to me? Obviously, mean? they read it. Matt Brown and Alan Hopkins must have read it. I've been sealed it back up and said he needs to look at this. Strickland has engaged in back-and-forth colloquies with fans, players, referees, and tournament officials. His 2003 World Pool Championship match with snooker star Steve Davis was particularly notorious. Before the match, Strickland had given a particularly charged interview with a Sky Sports reporter in which he complained that fans had been disrespectful to him, booing when his name had been broadcast over the PA, and that the event revolves around Davis. The event was organized by Matchroom Sport, which is headed by Davis's manager, Barry Hearn, while Sky's coverage had featured Davis heavily in order to win an audience in the UK. He also appeared upset that Sky Sports had shown numerous replays during the build-up to the match of his defeat to Davis in the final match of the previous year's Moscone Cup, which settled the event in favor of Team Europe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from the USA, the reigning and defending nine ball champion of the world, it's El During the match, Strickland entered the arena visibly downbeat and soon began to engage in heated verbal arguments with fans and referee Michaela Tab. Microphones caught him using foul language to one member of the crowd, then telling Tab to shut up when she reprimanded him. Rack nine, Steve Davis to break, leading by five racks to three. Right. Yeah, now here he goes. Earl is actually. Uh, That's enough. There's been. Oh, there's an angry exchange now happening between him and Michaela. She ordered him to be quiet while Davis was in play, and Earl said, "Shut up." This, uh, I think, she is just the lady. In response, Davis made use of his entitlement to take a break in the match. And Steve uh, has decided to put salt in that wound. He's going to take a break. Davis said later that the timing of this was intentional, leaving Strickland to the mercy of the crowd. During the gap, Strickland put his fingers in his ears to block out the crowd's support for Davis, to the derision of the crowd, who mocked the gesture and cheered loudly for Davis whenever Strickland took his fingers out. In the last few months, when he was in a losing position, well, these people are, like, took a long break. Okay? These people are ridiculous. Like, just don't speak to me like that. Right. 
Thank you, that's enough. He lost to Moscone Cup. Could that shot maybe lose his title? He drove it right into the rail. And he's given Steve. Missed it. Throws back. He can't. Look at all. Look at all. I think he was screaming justice. Justice, he shouted. Like Spider Man getting a new wire. At the 2006 Moscone Cup, which took place at Rotterdam, Netherlands between December 7th and 10th, the audience was loud, cheering and blowing horns when rooting for Team Europe. During a match with Nick Vandenberg, someone shouted from the audience for Strickland to shut up since he had continued talking while opponents were taking their shots. The noise was so intense that referee Michaela Tabb warned spectators they could be thrown out of the arena if they persisted. Strickland broke his cue out of frustration during the match against Thomas Engert, smashing it against the floor after a failed attempt at a shot. He replaced the broken shaft and went on to win the match 7-4. One year later, the 2007 Moscone Cup in Las Vegas saw Strickland complain strongly about the misbehavior of European players and fans, reaching its peak in a particularly bad-tempered clash between himself and reigning world champion Daryl Peach, where the referee, again Tab, had to separate the two amid fears their animosity might turn violent. Not then he didn't. Oh, not then. Right before I got ready to shoot. Not that like one. That. Not that one. It wasn't him. It was somebody in the crowd on that one. All right. Okay. All he wants to do is fight, Just... Whereas most matches in the event were followed by live TV interviews with both players, Strickland refused to participate. While the normally mild-mannered Peach stated, "Strickland is the scum of the earth. Everyone knows that." Given the opportunity to retract the statement moments later by the interviewer, he declined. An encounter of a fan with Earl happened on day one, just inside the south gate to the Araneta, as players, guests, media, and officials were waiting in a reasonably short security line. Hey Earl, how you doing? A fan said. Hey, good to see you, he said, shaking the fan's right hand, as stated by a fan blog. How's everything? The fan asked him, knowing that it wouldn't be more than a few seconds before he would go off. Not good, not good, he said. The fan then asked what's wrong, and Earl then shouted in that semi-angry high-pitched whine of his as he held up his thumb and forefinger in a circle the size of a golf ball. He admitted on how hard it was to play with gallstones and stated that he felt like his eyes are about to go. As several other people gathered around to listen, the fan tried to give him a little friendly advice to not think so much about the game. I can't, Earl said loudly, I gotta earn a living. He went on and on for a few more minutes. When the fan finally slipped off, Earl had already turned his ire on the other standing nearby. One conclusion going around is that Earl has lost it mentally. He's in total psychological meltdown. He needs professional help. The other conclusion from pool insiders is that Earl simply no longer has the ability to win at the highest levels of pool, and that he uses this anger as a way to set up future losses, so he was ready to make excuses. Earl certainly makes it easy for people to conclude that he's lost it. From the minute he showed up, he didn't seem to want to be here. His first few matches in the group stage offered clear evidence that he doesn't seem to even care about Poole anymore. In his first match, he lost 9-1 on the main TV table, and it was a terrible match on any measure. Throughout, Earl talked and cursed at himself, hung his head in his hands in utter disgust, and glared at the audience about perceived sharking. He swatted at balls and often missed on purpose. Earl had his usual share of bizarre gadgets with him. He started one match wearing a large bandage around his left arm. Later in another match, he took off the bandage, but then played a few racks with a jacket on. He wore a glove on both his right and left hand. He dressed like a street bum with disheveled shirts that looked like something he bought off a rack at the local Goodwill store for the poor. He changed his shirt three times on the day he played. He played with something large tucked in his back pocket under his shirt, which protruded out, which somebody suggested made him look like he had a tail. But then came his late-night match against Li Hewen of China on the TV table. 
A decent crowd stayed around and all were sure Earl was going down to defeat. Probably most stayed because they wanted to see a meltdown they were sure was coming. Earl didn't disappoint. From the beginning, he seemed to talk himself out of everything. At one point, he didn't like the layout of the balls and he swung his stick wildly, nearly hitting referee Nigel Reese in the head. A few racks later, he did just that. But then, down 5-0, to zero, Earl found a gear. Using the soft break, he ran nine straight racks, pocketing the balls on the break, quickly potting the remaining nine balls and running out. He stopped the antics and just played. It was the Earl of old, showing all the fantastic and otherworldly skills that have put him in the Hall of Fame. He was absolutely fantastic. The crowd, which included several players, cheered him on enthralled at witnessing a glimpse of the greatness he used to exhibit on a daily basis. Despite everything, Earl Strickland is inarguably one of the brightest players who played by his own rule and stayed true to his feelings when he was on. His temper is inextricably linked to his brilliance as a pool player. We hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.